I used to have a nightmare when I was a kid where I was on the rocket launching to, uh, to the moon and something bad happened. And I don't remember what the bad thing was, but it was something for me as a kid that was, that was quite terrifying. You guys have to talk to me because I don't have a speech prepared. <laughs> Hi, hey, hey, Charlotte. Hey, good. Good. Doing good. Getting closer. How's the ping pong? The ping pong? Yeah. I haven't been playing. I only played once. So what did you do? What did I do today? Got up late. I practiced for launch day when I have to take a nap, so I practiced for that by taking a nap. That's a nice uh, fish bowl you got you set up in there. It is very interesting, isn't it? Fish fish? What, are you, uh, what are you sipping on? It's uh, water. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Don't drink too much or you'll take one giant leak for mankind. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. For the record. That wasn't that good. <laughs> Are you getting excited, Scott? Or? You know, I think a little bit. You know, there's a lot of things have to happen between today and, and Friday. You get on this, like, very quick train that is moving in one direction and you don't have much control over it. I'm used to him being quarantined. I'm used to having to see him behind glass. I'm used to having to get checked out by the doctors before I get anywhere near him. I'm having my temperature taken. We're definitely limited to what we're allowed to do because we want to be able to see him before he leaves. And, you know, I, I do want that one last hug. <laughs> and I can't get that unless I follow the rules. It's definitely an eye-opener for us, for, you know, his family and his guests, because we're kind of getting a glimpse, just a small glimpse of what he's going to experience. It's, it's a desert in the middle of nowhere. There's nothing here, absolutely nothing here. It's kind of giving us that feeling like, wow, he's going to be by himself in the middle of space, in the middle of nowhere. When you are trying to get to space, you need to launch from a place that has two qualities. It has to be away from other people, in case your rocket goes awry on launch, and it has to be as close to the equator as possible. In the case of the US, this means Florida. In the case of Russia or the old Soviet Union, this meant Kazakhstan. So Baikonur, a southern town in Kazakhstan, was chosen as the place to test missiles and ultimately to fire rockets. Ever since the shuttle stood down, the U.S. has no way to get astronauts into space. Baikonur is the only train depot in town. It's the only way you can get out of town if what you're talking about is getting off the Earth. In some ways, it makes a little bit of sense to me to come to a place like this first, 
that is already isolated from what is normal to you because it seems more like it's a stepping stone to some place that's, you know, further isolation. You know, one remote place to a more remote place versus Florida and Disneyland to space. If you grew up in the Cold War, this was as deep into what was perceived as the Death Star as it was possible to go. Their chief designer, their rockets, their missiles in a strange place in the middle of the desert that stole its name from some other place so that nobody could find it. Then you get here, and it's just this goofy place. It's just this fun, strange place. Каждый не знает, ребята, вот это тоже работает на площадке. Вот человек работает на площадке. It's an entire town built in the service of a single industry. This is a rocket town. They used to have us do the first fit check and then you fly back to uh, Star City. You know, you'd sort of be in isolation, but it wasn't like this where people are, you know, keeping an eye on you. It's critical that only healthy people get sent to space. Not only are you in danger of not receiving the care you need, but once you get there, you run the risk of infecting other people in an enclosed environment. That's why astronauts must go into a two-week quarantine before they leave the Earth. Looking good. Правила все прочитали. Значит, никакой самодельцы, кто-то взял, захотел пойти туда или пойти туда. Значит, как только первый такой поступок, сразу без предупреждения за ворота. Это понятно, да? No problems. I have not been in contact with anybody who was sick. I, as a medical doctor, my job is restricted. In general, I restrict everything. Now, the doctors are infectious diseases. Where do they come from? They come from only from people. We are forced to isolate the number of people. Now, the doctors are infectious diseases. Where do they come from? They come from only from people. We are forced to isolate the number of people. Now, the doctors are infectious diseases. Where do they come from? They come from only from people. Если были какие-то такие моменты, их можно посчитать вот буквально по пальцам. Ну, так как она в общем-то действует с самого начала пилотируем космонавтики, то согласитесь, достаточно хорошая эффективность этой системы. Глаза может прийти. Как самочувствуем? Нормально. Ага. Just kidding. This is my backup, Jeff. I keep joking about how I'm gonna like get hurt or dogs are gonna bite me. My priority in life is to keep him healthy, so he's ready to go. <laughs> if something happens to me, Jeff doesn't get to go home for a year. And I have some things on my schedule for the next year. Probably more than usual. I wouldn't be quite ready to go just now. So but he doesn't want to go. <laughs> yeah. Um, Usually the backup doesn't want it. You don't. See, you you would go and you wouldn't. A lot of thought goes into this, you know, and you're, you know, when I was the backup, a couple, few times, three times I was, <clears throat> you, you know, you want to go in the right mindset. And when you're the backup, you don't think you're going. 
But at this point, the only thing that would keep me from flying is if I, like, you know, broke my leg. See if a cast would fit in and, the Soyuz. And I would vote for a small delay, at least long enough to get my wife over here to see her, since I haven't seen her for six weeks. <laughs> Так как космонавты люди живые, то есть это не роботы, не киборги какие-то, они живут тоже на эмоциях. Перед полетом они тоже начинают нервничать, так же как все обычные люди. И получается, с одной стороны, мы должны ограничить их контакты, а с другой стороны, должны оказывать им психологическую поддержку. Ну, самая психологическая поддержка это оказывается людьми же какими-то. Поэтому вот этот баланс достаточно вот такой сложный, каверзный. You know, the first people that flew in space flew from here. Before Yuri Gagarin, you know, flew that first flight, he planted a tree over there. So since then, everyone has to plant a tree. A lot of these people are no longer alive. You know, some of them got killed in accidents, a couple of Soyuz accidents they've had. I haven't yet gotten into my mindset of, okay, I'm flying to space again. In a few days, I'll be like, man, that might be my last like, cool breeze I feel for a while, or, you know, last of something, good cup of coffee, uh, which we really don't have here, but better cup of coffee <laughs> than we'll have on the space station. But, uh, I'll definitely start savoring those last moments of things. flight was 159 days and you definitely miss people on earth and even though you like the people that you're there with or hopefully you like them you do miss the other you know billions of people that are not there <laughs> 